Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is algebra. Today's topic are so-called field extensions, or as I would like to say, adjoining roots. So the main idea is as follows. So kind of the main um, object under study in something like Galois theory and actually beyond are field extensions, which are, well, you look at the rational numbers and you wonder what kind of numbers are kind of in between the rational and the complex numbers, what kind of number fields you can find in between the rational and the complex numbers. Um, you should think about something like adjoining a certain non-complex number to uh, a certain non-rational number to the rational numbers. I need to wonder what kind of relation those rational numbers satisfy. And those relations will be given by the so-called minimal polynomial of those numbers. Um, minimal polynomials are not the not part of this video, but they will certainly play an important role in future videos. And they certainly play also an important role without completely ignoring my videos. They play an important role in the theory altogether. Anyway, so let's just jump right into it. Um, basically, what I said before is we want to find fields in between C and Q. So the general theory, of course, will then be formulated for arbitrary fields, but those are the two main fields you should keep in mind. So C is our kind of our big parent field, and Q is the kind of the, it's not kind of, it is the minimal field contained in C, and you wonder for what is in between. So what is the whole zoo here in between, the green bracket? Um, just to be sure here, if you would do something, if you like R and you wonder for whatever is in between R and C, there's not much in between R and C. Um, C is a degree two field extension of R, namely C is R adjoint two, uh, adjoint two, yeah, adjoint I. Um, and that's about it. So um, there is no zoo between R and C. And what I just said, C is a degree two field extension over R. I will make this more precise in a second. But degree two basically means there is nothing else because, well, degree one field extension over R is R itself and degree two is already C. And that's about it. Um, for Q, the story is, is really, really different and really, really interesting. There's a whole big bunch of field extensions between uh, Q and C. So uh, two examples, you know, are, for example, you can add join here the same kind of the same, but for Q, it's still, it's still a degree two field extension, as we will see, but um, it is not the end of the story. But you can also add join something like square root of two, which doesn't really make sense here. Well, you can do it. So R add join square, you can always do something uh, stupid, like R add join square root of two, which is just R itself. You will see it in the definition. You can always do something like that. I'm not interested in the adjoining elements that are already in my field. By definition, you can do that, but it's not, it's not very exciting. Anyway, here you have those two examples and they are uh, both degree two field extensions of Q, but there's a whole zoo, as I said. And how are they defined? Well, um, they're the kind of the minimal fields con in, contained in C containing, well, let's say I and uh, uh, in Q itself or the square root of two, right? So we kind of want to have a technology uh, machinery to study those field extensions because uh, as you will see, or maybe not quite well, you will see it in this video, but it will be, become clear uh, as you go along learning more about Galois theory because um, those field extensions lie really at the heart of studying polynomials. And this is what all about, um, that is what algebra is all about, studying polynomials in some, well, algebraic way. Um, and the whole point why you really want to have such a machinery is that the, whole, the question isn't as trivial as it looks like, right? If you think about square root of two, which is here, or if you think about um, theta, which is here, so theta. Um, so if you think about those two, then the question usually is very easy. But before I can make this more precise, I need to explain what xeta is. Xeta is a non-trivial root of x squared minus one. So a non-trivial solution to this equation. And the trivial solution of this equation is of course, uh, well, x equals one. 
and I don't want that. I want either uh, either of the other two. They are not the same. No two, you get two different solutions. But for what I'm going to say, and for most purposes, actually, it doesn't really matter. So you could choose your favorite one, and that's my theta. And I would like to ask a kind of naive question: What is the minimal um, relation this thing satisfies in Q. And what do I mean by that? Well, I mean by that, it, it certainly is not an element of Q. Okay, that's not completely obvious, but it is not an element of Q. But maybe you can take powers of it and then multiply it by certain elements from Q to get a, a, an equation with coefficients in Q. So if that's true, and that is actually true, what you would do is you would start listing the table of the powers. So zero's power, first power, second power, third power, fourth power, fifth power, sixth power. You get the pattern. Uh, the zero's power is of course trivial, and the sixth power is funny. It's eight times one, and um, I would like to really just one is, a, is special, so I, I kind of pull it. A, uh, so this is of course eight. Eight times one is of course just eight. But I would like to make make clear why I would like to look at one instead of um, a, a, a times one instead of eight. So one will be a base cell, but as we will see. Uh, similar here. So the coefficient, so the, said otherwise, the coefficient from Q here is what is eight. It's four, it's four, is two, is two would be one, uh, would be one. Right? So that's fine. And I'm looking for some linear combination that those things satisfy. And I go to the sixth power, and it's it's clear that I now can write down a linear combination um, in Q because this is just an element of Q. It's eight. So um, in other words, if I call this small x, that small x to the six is eight. So small x to the six minus eight is certainly zero. So has, there you go. They have an equation, a relation. Um, satisfied with only rational coefficients. So certainly up to a certain point, that's fine. Um, not for all numbers, of course, but for this one. Uh, but what is the minimal one? That's not so easy to decide. And kind of the whole point about this machinery of field extensions is to understand what is the minimal relation. So for, the, for, for those easy ones, so um, adjoining a square root of two and well, this one, it might not be completely trivial, adjoining theta. The degree is actually two. And the degree is really just this uh, degree of the minimal equation. Why? Because we have this minimal equation satisfied in Q, right? Square root of two squared minus two is zero. And it can't be one because square root of two is not rational. Um, that you have a degree two relation for theta isn't all that obvious. You have one, it looks like this. You, of course, don't have a degree one relation. That's, again, easy to see. Um, and then you get this degree two relation just follows from, from by, by factoring this polynomial here into x squared plus x uh, plus one times the trivial root I want to take out, so x minus one. So that's the same as, yeah, that's the same as this one here. OK, so minimal relations are of elements are sometimes not easy to see. So for, for square root of two, it's kind of easy. For this one, it's a, it's a little bit, uh, we don't really know. It's a bit fishy, but not too hard. For this one, I would put a really a question mark right now. So we want the machinery to do this. And what do you, the main point or one of the main theorems in this field is so-called the, the, tower, the, the, the tower theorem. So let's have a look at the tower theorem. So um, maybe an easier example than, than the one from before would be forced uh, root of two. So forced root of two certainly satisfies the degree four relation. Um, and you can also check that it satisfies no other smaller relations by just writing down the successive powers. And you will never hit any element of Q and it's maybe not super easy, but also not very hard to see that they're actually linear independent over Q. In other words, and that's why I wanted to have this one written out uh, uh, on the other slide, is that those things actually form a basis of this field seen as a vector space over this beast. Right? As a Q vector space, those four elements form a basis. That's another definition of the degree. So um, degree is a minimal relation 
the minimal degree of a polynomial relation satisfied or um, the number of basis elements um, as a field expansion, as a, as a vector space. But now comes a funny thing. You can study it over a bigger field and you get a smaller number. So you can make your polynomials smaller as long as you make your fields bigger. So you allow more coefficients, and then you can decrease the, um, the, the, um, the powers of support of the uh, variable x in your polynomial. Because this thing is actually of this, uh, over this field, so here's the difference, right? So this q is q adjoint square root of two, it's actually only of dimension two instead of of dimension four. Those are the only two basis elements. How can you see this? Well, the point is if you square this guy, of course you get square root of two, but square root of two is an allowed coefficient here. So um, now you satisfy a degree two relation. In other words, you have this funny nice diagram. So you extend Q, you add a square root of two and you add a square root of four, which is a subfield, uh, the other one. So this is this square root of two is a subfield of four square root of two. Um, clearly because you just take it twice and you get square root of two. And you calculate the degree in each step. So this was for the degree two relation. I mean, this was easy to see. This is uh, this green one here. Um, this is also a degree two relation, which is also easy to see because this squared is square root of two. And we also convinced ourselves in a slightly more complicated way that this is a degree four relation. So you might wonder whether this whole thing is actually multiplicative. And indeed it is. So let's have a look uh, at the precise statements. So the way you would define those things is, is you take your parent field and in the before the example before it was C, now it's L. This was a really bad line. Now it's L. And you have the field you really care about, which is in this definition the subfield K. And you take a set of roots, which is just a, a set of elements from L. In my example before, this was, for example, the square root of two thing or whatever, I and whatever I had. Blah, 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 blah. And, and the field extension. Uh, is really defined as a subfield of L. That's why you have this parent field. So the field extension is by defined by adjoining root. It's just the intersection of all fields containing everything you want, right? It's containing K and your set of roots. It's really given by adjoining root. And this thing is by definition a, a, a vector space over, over K. So you can ask for the dimension and that's just usually denoted by, well, by this expression, this uh, square brackets, and it's called the degree. Okay, so what is known about this stuff? Okay, before I discuss the first point, let me just um, say all of the before fits into this picture by just ignoring <laughs> the set brackets. So whenever you have just one element, you just write K round brackets, whatever element you want to adjoin. And a basis, of those things are given by exactly those um, powers. The, the one I listed here and the one I listed here. So that's what you always do. You um, take those successive powers and you go up to the degree, up to the dimension, which goes up to infinity, of course, if, if the de degree happens to be uh, inf infinite. Anyway, so this is the basis. So one u, u squared and so on. And if this ever stops, so if you have a finite D here, then you call this field extension or in general, any field extension algebraic because you, your elements, your roots, you want to adjoin, they satisfy an algebraic equation. That's why you call it algebraic. Otherwise it's kind of, what you're studying is not really a point of uh, part of algebra anymore in some sense. And you call things transcendental. Um, for example, if you believe the statement, and I, I, I mean, obviously it, it's true. It's not obviously true. Um, so the proof is pretty tr uh, tricky that pi is transcendental. And this is saying that there is no equation of the form. It's just exactly this one, whatever. Uh, no equation of the form, something like that. So involving pi as a variable, if you want and having coefficients from the rational numbers. So this would be a transcendental field extension if you adjoin pi. And the funny thing is if you adjoin pi, so uh, q adjoint pi, 
is actually, because it's transcendental, it's actually isomorphic to the rational functions in, a, in some determinant, indeterminate. There's no relation. It satisfies no relation. That's what it makes transcendental. Otherwise, it satisfies the relation is when you call it algebraic. And the relation um, that you're looking for, if it's algebraic, is a certain polynomial, an irreducible polynomial of the corresponding degree, which kills your element, right? This is a relation defined by the element. And the most important thing that I already had indicated here on the last slide is a so-called tower law. It's a very easy rule. So you have a very big field M, you have a very small field K, you wonder about M over K, it's really beautiful. Um, then you can stick in L. So M over K factor through L. That's what you can, that, that's how you can remember it. It's a tower theorem. You can build a tower of them. Um, of course, it's called the tower theorem now because you can, now you can have an even bigger field and you can factor further and further and further. And further. Right. So if we have our machinery working, we should be actually able to answer the question from before. What is the degree of this field extension, right? So what is the minimal relation satisfied by those, um, by, by uh, zeta times square root of two. So these two are pretty easy and I've just put them here. Well, these are really easy to see and this is how it usually looks like. So this is the picture you should keep in mind for field extensions, the tower theorem. How you usually use it, you have a small field, you have a big field and you have two different fields you factor through. So uh, a square one and a circle one, whatever. And um, what you would like to see is that those two are the same and those two are the same. And then you can calculate by the tower theorem, the EZD, the degree of the top um, uh, field, field extension. So in this case, it works as follows. So you can easily see those, those twos. So you should get four. And well, we double check. We already know that it's at most six. We actually do know that um, it contains both fields, so it can't, so, th okay, this is six. So this rules out everything bigger than six, of course, not bigger than six. Um, you have those two inside and they are different. So this says it's, it's not one. So one is ruled out and it's also not two. Two is also ruled out because you have those two sitting inside. And the degree is divisible by two by, by the tower formula, by the tower law, which rules out three. Uh, and five, of course. So the only thing that remains are six and four as potential candidates. And we already know that six could work. So what you now need to do is you need to find a degree four equation um, showing that this element here is a linear, a Q linear combination of the others. Uh, so showing that the corresponding polynomial is irreducible and yeah, it's actually not so hard to see. So here you have one, here you have this one, and here you have this one. And remember that you had those, this equation. Um, so you just flank, well, what do you do? So this, this already appears four times, so four. This appears twice. And you want to balance it out, so you multiply this by two. And this appears just once. So you need to balance that out and multiply this by four. And the minimal polynomial should be x squared plus two x, uh, x to the four, I'm sorry, not x squared, x to the four, because I'm in the fourth row here, plus two times x squared plus four. Uh, so we have just proven that this is a degree four relation for, um, this is not very, very, easy um, field extension. And you can do something in general. Anyway, I'm already starting waffling. So it's time to wrap up. Um, so field extensions are crucially related to polynomials because field extensions are basically asking uh, at join a certain roots, what does relation satisfy by, by those roots if I only allow a certain, um, a certain specific coefficients. And uh, when really the theories meet uh, when we discuss minimal polynomials. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you next time.